there are certain crystals in which if an ordinary unpolarized light is incident then that uh, unpolarized ordinary light is split into two refracted beams or rays and this uh, phenomena is uh, known as double refraction or bar fringes now uh, these crystals on which uh, the incident uh, unpolarized light uh, on incidence uh, gets uh, refracted into two rays are called doubly refracting crystals now there is a certain direction in this uh, crystals where the two rays the velocity of the two rays are same that is there is no splitting of the incident ray into two refracted ray along this certain direction and this direction along which the velocity of the both the rays are same is known as optic axis now there are two types of doubly refracting crystals one is uniaxial crystal in the uniaxial crystal the two rays are refracted and uh, one of the rays which uh, follows the ordinary laws of uh, refraction is called the ordinary ray or o ray following the ordinary laws of refraction and another ray is called extraordinary ray which does not in general follow the ordinary laws of refraction now in uniaxial crystal there is only one optic axis Now the examples of uniaxial crystals are calcite, quartz, tourmaline. Now another type of uh, doubly refracting crystals are there, which are called biaxial crystals in biaxial crystal there are 
टू ऑप्टिक एक्सेस The examples are topaz, argonite, next uh, we shall see the geometry of calcite crystal now various doubly refracting uh, crystals are found to be in nature which are having different shapes one of uh, the doubly refracting uh, crystals is calcite whose chemical formula is ca co3 and it is also found naturally and uh, uh, a large crystal of uh, calcite is uh, transparent and colorless and at times it was uh, found in abundance in uh, iceland and that is why it is also called iceland spar uh the naturally occurring calcite is having a rhombohedral shape uh this is uh, a crystal of calcite which is having rhombohedral shape and uh, this uh, crystal is formed by six parallelogram faces having angles 101 degree 55 minutes and 78 degree 5 minutes and there are eight corners there are six faces 1 2 and four and this top face and this bottom face and eight corners now uh, there are two uh, oppositely uh, uh, faced uh, corners in this uh, crystal at which the three meeting faces makes an obtuse angle of 101 degree 55 minutes uh at a and at c1 both these corners the three meeting faces makes obtuse angle of three obtuse angle each equal to 101 degree 55 minutes the angle is 101 degree 55 minutes and at uh, all the other corners there are two acute angle and one obtuse angle now we shall define the optic axis if a straight line is drawn within the crystal uh, from the blunt corner that is at a or at c1 
which is equally inclined to the three meeting faces then that line or any other line which is parallel to that line forms the optic axis therefore if this is the uh, line or the direction which is inclined equally to the three meeting faces here or the line or the direction here which is equally inclined to the three meeting faces at C1 then they form the what you call the optic axis. Now uh, the most important property of the optic axis is that along the optic axis there is no double refraction that is the uh, ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray both travel with the same velocity and which equal which simply means that there is no splitting of uh, uh, the ray into extraordinary and the ordinary rays the optic axis is that direction along which if a ray ordinary ray travels then there is no double refraction that is the rays ray does not get refracted into two rays along this direction there is only one refracted ray and no double refraction takes place. Now we shall define uh, principal section. Now it is defined as the plane principal section is the plane containing the optic axis and perpendicular to the two opposite paired faces. Now uh, through any point through a point three principal sections can be drawn corresponding to the three oppositely uh, paired faces. But since uh, uh, there can be infinite number of lines which is parallel to the optic axis therefore uh, there will be or there can be infinite number of principal sections and one of uh, that section here is uh, A, A1, C1, C. A, A1, C1, C which contains this optic axis and which is uh, perpendicular to the faces here which is A, B, C, D and A1, B1. C1 and D1. So this is A, A1, C1 and C is 
one of such uh, principal sections and uh, principal section uh, uh, splits the crystal in a parallelogram having angles 109 degree and 71 degree it's like this So this is 109 degree So the principal section always cuts the crystal in such a way that there is a formation of a parallelogram which is having angle 71 degree and 109 degree which is also shown here. This is 71 degree here and this angle is 109 degree. Here also you can see this is 109 degree and this angle here will be 71 degree. And here we have already mentioned these are the blunt corners at A and C1 each having angles 101 degree 55 minutes. Next we shall uh, uh, talk about the phenomena of double refraction. Now Erasmus Bartholinus uh, in 1969 discovered that uh, when an ordinary unpolarized ray of light is incident on uh, crystals like calcite, uh, uh, quartz, etc., then the rays is split into two rays. One ray which follows the ordinary laws of uh, refraction called the ordinary ray or the O ray. which follows uh, laws of refraction and another ray which uh, in general does not follow the ordinary uh, laws of refraction which are called the extraordinary or E rays which does not in general follow the laws of refraction. Now this is an ordinary unpolarized light. It falls on a, a calcite crystal or a quartz crystal or a crystal which uh, is capable of uh, uh, showing double refraction and they split into two rays that is O ray and E ray and this is the principal section and so uh, it is shown by a parallelogram containing 109 degree and 71 degrees. Now both E ray and O ray are plane polarized with uh, the vibrations in the plane of the principal section and perpendicular to the plane of principal section which means that the 
plane of vibration of E ray and O ray are perpendicular to H other. So, this phenomena of splitting of unpolarized ray into two refracted rays is called double refraction or Bayer fringens. And the crystal which exhibit this double refraction is called double refracting crystal. or birefringent. Now, there are two characteristics of this uh, splitted uh, rays that is these rays are plane polarized in which one of the rays is uh, following the ordinary laws of refraction which is called the O ray or the ordinary ray and the another ray which does not uh, in general follow the ordinary laws of refraction which is called E ray or the extraordinary ray and also the fact that uh, the O ray and E ray their vibrations are either along the principal section or perpendicular to the principal section or at right angles to the principal section simply meaning that if E ray is uh, along the principal section then O ray is perpendicular to the principal section which simply means that the plane of vibration of O ray and E ray are also perpendicular to each other both E ray and O ray are plane polarized and one of the rays O ray follows the uh, ordinary laws of refraction and E ray does not follow the ordinary laws of refraction that can be uh, seen by if uh, uh, there is a uh, ink dot and uh, in a paper and uh, this uh, uh, crystal W refracting crystal is placed on that ink dot and uh, uh, that crystal is rotated along an axis perpendicular to the paper then we can see two images one image being stationary formed by the ordinary uh, refraction or ordinary uh, rays being refracted and uh, that uh, image is uh, the ordinary image and uh, that ray is called the ordinary ray and we also see another image which rotates along with the crystal which is formed by the extraordinary ray and uh, and hence we uh, see that there are uh, two rays one uh, the stationary being uh, following the ordinary laws of refraction and the one which is not stationary which is moving with the crystal is the extraordinary ray now uh, also the uh, second characteristics is that the plane 
of vibration of E ray and O ray are perpendicular to each other. This is the first characteristics and this is the second characteristics. This both these characteristics can be understood if the uh, transmitted ray that is O ray and E ray is made to pass through a crystal tourmaline crystal and rotate it. If the crystal is rotated and the uh, transmitted rays O ray and E ray are made to pass through then we see that number one the E ray and O ray are alternatively that is their intensity are alternatively minimum and maximum which means that these two rays are plane polarized and also we see that when E ray is maximum E ray's intensity is maximum then O ray's intensity is minimum and vice versa which uh, shows that the plane of vibration of E ray and O ray are right angles or perpendicular to each other.